Hey, thanks for joining me for midweek. We've had a great week here at Vacation Bible School. Uh, today, Pastor Chad presented the uh, gospel to them, the plan of salvation, and we had seven uh, children accept Christ. Man, that's something to be excited about. And uh, I'm so glad that our church loves kids enough that uh, we have Vacation Bible School so that they can um, step uh, take next steps into their relationship with God. And I think as adults, we need to continue to make next steps in our relationship uh, with God. And sometimes we just need to be reminded of what those steps are and what the old way of life was like. Because for some of us, um, we became Christians a long time ago and we just think that whatever I'm doing now is okay because I'm a Christian. Well, we need to continue to always evaluate our thoughts, um, our actions, our words, uh, to make sure that they align with what God says. And I think um, Colossians is a great place for us to do that. It's a short book. Uh, I encourage you to read it sometimes. There's a lot of information, practical things about how to live a godly life and what not to. So in the third chapter of Colossians, um, in verse 5, it says, Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. So the things that belong to the earth, we need to get rid of those. When we accept Christ, we're supposed to turn away from those things. And he lists some of them. It's not an all-inclusive list, but it's a place to begin. Sexual immorality impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. And, you know, a lot of times if we read that in a different version, it takes on um, a new light. It gets us to think a little bit different about our attitudes and our actions and our thoughts. Um, and so this is what it says um, in the message version. And that means killing off everything connected with the way of death, sexual promiscuity, impurity, lust, doing whatever you feel like whenever you feel like it, and grabbing whatever attracts your fancy. So, you know, how many times do we say, well, I did it because I wanted to do it, or um, I thought it was a, a good idea because I wanted to do it then. Well, you know, Scripture's saying we need to take off those things because that's the way of the world. It's not the way with Christ. And so we need to continue to always look and see and examine. Um, but it's not all about taking off something old. In the message, it also talks about the old way of life is a, uh, a set of ill-fitted clothes that we throw in the fire. I'm not sure that we always throw those in the fire. I think sometimes we stack them neatly in the corner and when it's convenient for us, we go back and try them on. And then when we decide that that's not the way we want to live or think or act, we fold them up and put them in the corner. And we need to throw those in the fire and be done with them. Um, but it's always not about getting rid of stuff, but it's also about putting thing, new things into your life, uh, into your speech, um, into our actions. And um, that's addressed down in verse 12. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy, dearly loved, do you think of yourself like that? Do you think of yourself as holy and dearly loved? If you don't, why not? Because that's what God describes his people as, holy and dearly loved. And if you think you're not holy, what's keeping you from being holy? Is it something that needs to be thrown in the fire and be done away with? So dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you have a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. Above all of these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together 
in perfect unity. You know, sometimes we need to stop before we speak. We need to stop before we act. And we need to say, okay, is this something that God wants to, me to say? Am I being kind? Am I being compassionate? Am I being gentle? Am I being patient? But overall, is my motive love? Is that the thing that's driving me? Is it love or is it because I feel like it right now? So we need to always do that. Now in the message version of chapter 12, uh, verse 12, uh, chapter three, verse 12, it says this. So chosen by God for this new way of love, dress in the wardrobe God picked out for you, compassion and kindness, humility, gentle strength, discipline, be even tempered, content with second place, quick to forgive an offense, forgive as quickly as and completely as the master forgave you. And regardless of what else you put on, wear love. It's your basic all-purpose garment. Never be without it. So you see, our motive, our words, our actions should all speak that we have a love relationship with God. And I think the longer we're Christians, sometimes we forget to ask ourselves those questions. Of, Am I acting out of love for other people? Or is it because I really feel like I want to do this right now? Or I think I want to say this to them. Do we filter things through what Scripture says we're supposed to act like as Christians and what we're supposed to put on and the things that we're supposed to take off? So, you know, it's easy to read those words, but when we're in the middle of a situation, it's hard to act those out. And that's where our reliance and our relationship with Christ comes in to help us be that kind of person he wants us to be, not because it comes by us naturally, but because but it comes to us because of our relationship with him. Let me pray for us as we seek to be the kind of people God wants us to be. God, we just thank you for your word, that it encourages us to be your people, one that's clothed in love, that that's the basis of everything. It's the starting point of everything that we say, everything that we do, everything that we seek to become, and that we want to be your people filled with love and patience and kindness and gentleness and self-control. Father, I pray that you would give us the wisdom and the strength to be that kind of a person. And before we speak, help us to run what we want to say through the filter of love. And it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Hey, thanks for joining me this week and hope to see you again soon.